I don't remember if the piano was out of tune or something was wrong with the situation where they had to just use their imagination, be creative and make the situation work somehow. And then they ended up having this spectacular performance. So it was like, oh. they were knocked down and then they had to find a way to pick themselves back up. And then it was like, okay, we're doing this. You know, it was like this sense of momentum or motivation to, you know, MacGyver your way out of it. You know, when I say- Yeah, that, you're like compensating for it, for- You're being resourceful, right? Exactly, you're activating your- resourcefulness instead of and which is a place of empowerment instead yeah. of pulling in and looking for approval from others exactly and that's what i'm hoping that those cold showers are gonna do when i think of cold showers i'm thinking not gonna happen so why did i start doing them welcome to the single karaoke show i'm lenore at your service today's topic is cold showers and stage fright what can cold exposure do for you if you have any kind of performance anxiety? And most people do. I'm talking about that also with a colleague of mine, Elisa, whom I had on the show already. And there will be some singing in the cold shower because this is a singing show. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Lenore. I'm a singer and a voice teacher. I want to talk to you about what cold exposure did for me with regards to the way I act on the stage and the way I control my body on stage. Now, if you know a little bit about my background, I started my singing journey with an extreme stage fright. Very, very bad case of anxiety of the thought of people hearing me no matter who, where, or when. With the years, I learned how to cope with it and had a lot of trial and error that led me to some conclusions and some tips and tricks that I gave myself and learned along the way from multiple sources. I learned also what stage fright really is. And all it is, is actually fight or flight response. So if you have some sort of stage fright, you get nervous before you perform. It can be on the same day, it can be days in advance or weeks in advance. It can be just the thought of, of performing just gets you into um, shutdown. Um, it can be right when you walk on stage, that's when it hits you. If you experience any of those things, there is not much advice about it. I'll correct myself, there is a lot of advice about it but not much advice tailored to singers and not much advice that I found is realistic, um, gradual and practical enough. And that's part of why it took me so long to get over my stage fright. I would say it took me about a decade before I started enjoying my performances a little bit. Um, and in the beginning, it was just complete and utter terror <clears throat> so how does that connect us to cold showers good question because i heard about cold showers a long time ago and the immediate response i had to that is no not for me that sounds like torture so i was not even gonna go there and you hear about all the benefits that you get from cold exposure it closes your pores and it gives you good skin and it gives you uh, a boost to your immune system that gives you energy and motivation and whatever all fine and good when i think of cold showers i'm thinking not gonna happen so why did i start doing them well somehow it popped up in my feed and there was this guy that I knew and I wanted to see what his experience was with cold showers and he used the words fight or flight. And that's when I had this light bulb moment. When you're exposed to the cold, as in you go into the ice tub or the cold shower and you're hit by cold water, you get fight or flight response. And this is exactly the response that you have when you're about to expose yourself to the opinion of the public, as in go on stage and display your voice. It could also, by the way, be an instrument or dancing or acting or public speaking. It doesn't matter if you're exposed to the, 
judgment of the public, this is fight or flight. And so I thought, if under the cold shower, I will have fight or flight, and that's supposed to teach me how to deal with that. When I crack the code on how to deal with that kind of fight or flight, I might be able to transfer it to the stage. By now, and I started in June, um, 2022, we are now in November, 2022. So five months ago, I started with cold showers. By now I can say I was right. There's a lot we can learn about how to calm the body and how to train your mindset and your body behavior in the cold exposure. With the help of the cold exposure, you can have multiple opportunities to work through that and just get used to it and practice. And one of the things that I learned that I should preach to my students and to myself when it comes to stage fright is that you have to practice that on stage. You cannot train yourself at home to get over stage fright because you are not in fight or flight. You have to be in that situation. And cold showers give you this amazing opportunity to do this daily if you wanted to. Yes. This is working. Let's learn about cold exposure and stage fright. To start with, I want to go to the call I had with Elisa. Elisa was on my show a couple of episodes back when we were talking about the singer's why. Episode number four of the show called Healthy Why, Healthy Vocals. And after that, we kept on talking and we talked about the cold showers and I was just start starting back then i already had some stuff to share and let's just listen to the call so we've decided to come back because we had another idea that we wanted to talk about right alisa yes <laughs> yeah and it was your idea so why don't you just take it away and uh, and talk about what you want to talk about so i got your email this morning about finding a connection between stage adrenaline and the adrenaline that courses through your veins with cold therapy or taking a cold shower. Right? Yeah. And that was really fascinating to me because this is something that I think about a lot. I puzzle over for my own students as they're facing their, their semester's juries and things like that, where you know they're going to be presenting songs in front of a, a panel of faculty and um, or also just for regular performances. But I think that there is a little bit more pressure surrounding juries because you know you're singing for experts, right? And and anytime that you know that someone is able to critique you on a deeper level, um, sometimes that sends you into that headspace of uh, student, am I, am I good enough? You know, needing permission, questioning yourself. Anyway, yes. so we, we work a lot on Number one, my number one is try to find more performance opportunities, right? To, so that you understand what your body does when you have nerves, when you have that adrenaline in your system and how it affects you. Right. Physiologically and psychologically, right? Because if you open your mouth to sing and something different comes out from what you're used to, then that's something your brain is going to kick in and say, alert, red alert, you know, something, something is off. Um, and so I... I would love to talk just about, because this seems like a backdoor into understanding how to have the mind over matter thing, right? Which it's like, we can talk about that, but it's always easier said than done. In the moment, depending on the combination of factors, you're gonna feel a little bit different and maybe that'll affect your voice a little bit differently. So I would love to just talk about this parallel between what you've discovered in your right. 12 days. Is it 12 days of cold showers? 12 days, today is 12 days. <laughs> I started taking cold showers last Monday and I've been making a little clip after every shower. So what, So you wanna talk about how we might be able to transfer one, like from one field to another? Yeah, and how you are doing that right now, right? Hmm. You, sing, you, take, you, you record a clip of singing after your shower or in your shower? No, no, I'm just recording to document what I'm going through. Oh, oh great. Um, but that's not a bad idea. I should record myself singing while in the shower. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you said you started singing. Yeah, I did. I'm going to be comfortable with this freezing cold water on my body. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, exactly. So that's what I started doing after about a week. I, I felt 
comfortable enough to just risk it basically and see what, what comes out of my mouth when I'm completely shivering, half hysterical under the cold shower. Um, so just for everybody to know um, th what people talk about in cold therapy and that what got me sparked, like the spark that got me going in, into this experiment is uh, that people refer to what happens to you under the cold shower as fight or flight. And what you experience in stage fright is fight or flight. So they're talking about how to come to a point when your body is in control and calm. Well, when the state, uh, not the stage fright, but the fight or flight um, kicks in. So I was like, that could be it. That could be like a solution when you go through a period of one month as opposed, as opposed to a year at least. Like people who use my tools for stage fright and go through the course and everything, they still have to like practice on the stage. And that, you know, if you're really, really adamant, you can maybe do that once a week. If you're really like, you know, very <laughs> on top of it and like scheduling karaoke with your friends every single week, right? So that's, it's, it's harder to get opportunities to go into fight or flight on the stage than it is to go into the cold shower. So I was just thinking if it works, Wow, then we have, you know, discovered America and it's gonna be amazing. Hi, let's take a little break from the call. I have something important to say. Did you know that you can also call the show and talk to me? I would love to hear from you if you are struggling with anything that has to do with singing or if you went through some difficulties and came out the other end. I would love to have you on the show. All you have to do is go on my blog, singwell.eu and contact me through there. Keep in touch. Now let's get back to the show. It's difficult for me to gain control of my body. I'm not there yet. So I feel more comfortable after a couple of minutes under the cold shower. That's fine. But after a week or so, I started accepting what it is. So what I'm preaching for other people to do <laughs> when they get the nerves before the stage, like don't fight that. Like if you are in fight or flight and then you start fighting, or you want to run away, so you want to, you know, not do this, and you, you know, just, or you don't want to feel those feelings, right? Um, then you are confirming that you are in a place of risk, right? That you're in a state of danger. And so you want to allow those feelings, and you want to not fight them. So I actually started doing that in practice under the shower, and I was like, yeah, I'm panting right now, and my heart rate is through the roof. And that's great. And I just started telling myself that that's good. I love it. Of course, that was not true, but I just did it. You know, sometimes the voice was shaky, not as often as I thought it would be. And I think it's because of the non-stop principle that, that we were talking about uh, in the other call. So you just, if you just go for it and you're not trying to fight where you were at, then the the chances of you screwing things up is a lot, a lot, 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 lot lower. So that's what happened. And some, you know, <laughs> some notes were not in tune because they were too shaky. Um, and one time I think I sort of like, I opened my mouth and no voice came out because I was like, <clears throat> so that happened. <laughs> so now I'm really curious what would happen if I do that like for a few weeks more. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you place yourself because a lot of our duress is psychological and it's imagined, but you're actually placing yourself in into physical duress. Yes. Body going into this. Fight yes. Fight. Um, not just a psychological fight or flight, but a physical fight or flight. And then dealing with that, it reminds me of, um, I should look this up so you can link to it, but I saw a TED talk once. It was really interesting about sort of when you are placed in a situation that's not ideal, you actually can level up your performance. And it was, I can't remember, hmm. I think it was a pianist who came and I don't remember if the piano was out of tune or something was wrong with the situation where they had to just use their imagination, be creative and make the situation work somehow. And then they ended up having this spectacular performance. So it was like, oh. They were knocked down and then they had to find a way to pick themselves back up. And then it was like, okay, we're doing this. You know, it was like 
this sense of momentum or motivation to, you know, MacGyver your way out of it. You know, when I say, yeah, that, you're like compensating for it, for you're being resourceful, right? Exactly. You're activating your resourcefulness instead of, and which is a place of empowerment instead yeah. of pulling in and looking for approval from others. Exactly. And that's what I'm hoping that those cold showers are going to do. So I'm not hoping, like I'm not expecting necessarily to be in complete control and not having heart race going up or heavy breathing or anything like that or, or stop shaking. I suspect that it will reduce in time, but I don't expect it to go away. But it's like when, when you see Wim Hof doing it, He's completely calm, but he's what he's testifying is like, I feel alive. <laughs> so he does feel it, but it translates in his body to a very positive thing. Yeah. It's not anything that he's not in control of, but it is something that it happens to him and it is something different. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that would be great if we could have that. Yeah, he has no need to fear it anymore because he's been doing this. He's been doing breath work and, and things like that for how many years? I think decades. Yeah. He's a total expert. So yeah. he goes into it kind of, yeah, with excitement. And yeah. those feelings, those charged feelings are still there. Yeah. But yeah, he looks at it with excitement rather than dread or fear. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it, I, I was able to do, to make that uh, transformation from complete anxiety to thrill and enjoyment yeah in something like 10 years <laughs> so that's a long time and I didn't get it didn't have any guidance or like tools to do this so I'm really excited by the idea that this could be a quicker process but I still think that you have to be able to be aware of what happens and then transfer it. I don't think it will happen automatically. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. It's a hack, but I, I have an added, yeah. um, I have an added challenge for it though, which is because I have, I sing different genres. I don't know if you've ever seen my jazz ukulele stuff that I do. Um, no, I only oh. saw the classical stuff. Yeah. So, so when I sing jazz, I have zero nerves, no matter what mm. I can sing in front of anyone. I could sing mm. Queen of England, my jazz ukulele, and just like be super expressive and happy to be there. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but when I sing classically, that's when I put the pressure on and so mm. different. That's when my fight or flight, especially with certain arias. And anyway, so that's interesting. You say you put the pressure on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I put it on myself. So, mm. but I'm going to have to try yeah. these cold showers, Lenore. I, I think yeah well please if you do i would love that I, I don't want to be alone in this if you do that please document either by video after every shower or just write down something like short every day so we will have like a testimony because my hope is to have like a couple of dozen testimonies of how these things work okay good so smart we can start That's like talking about it and well, yeah, it's, it's not really a scientific example, but like, the bigger, the better. But it's something, I think if a couple of dozen people are able to use that uh, for their stage ride, then that's something Yeah, oh, that absolutely. people can start talking about. Yeah, well, and I think something else that I admire about you, Lenore, is that you seem to want to boil a lot of things about singing down to a science to be a little mm. more predictable and to be a little bit more explainable and kind of demystify. But that's your yes. crap, like I'm authentic, like this is who I am, let's get to the heart of this, let's just be straight. I love it. Thank you. I, it's just what I need, you know, because I had a lot of uh, experience getting the inspirational aspect of the singing or the imagery of the singing. And I was like, but how do you do that? How do you like actually do that? And with, with one of my teachers, I actually had to go to another teacher who was working with her and was like responsible for the physical aspect of what she's talking about so that I go to him and tell him, look, she told me to do this, um, I don't know, um, stretch my molars um, sideways. Or, 
how do you do that? <laughs> and then he would work with me and, and show me how to do it. Um, so I thought, yeah, if I'm a teacher, I, I want to explain things to people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's such a vast field of elements that factor into singing, such a vast field. And um, that's why I love things like your performance exercises that just sort of narrow it down to something simple. Because yeah. I I think it can you have to do it eventually, right? Yes. It, it, wow, it's totally a minefield. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for, for talking to me about this. That was uh, exciting. Yeah, thank you. So keep me, keep me posted about how this uh, cold showers go. I will. I'll do yeah, it. and do it carefully. Yeah, don't, don't go into it uh, too quickly. You know, you have to do it gradually and stuff. Like, I'll, I'll send you some, some links if you need to. Yes, that would be great. I would love links. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Elisa. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Wow, that feels like that was so long ago. It was just a few months ago, but it just... <laughs> now I want to show you some examples of my singing in the cold shower, back from my experience in summer of 2022. <laughs> Day one. My jaw is shaking, focus on exhaling, and I survived it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shivering, so <sighs> just curious what uh, what's going to become of that. Day nine, <laughs> not getting easier, I'm completely out of control. I'm out of control. <laughs> I went all in. I was cold. I went with the feeling of hysteria and I started singing. I sang freaking Bach, okay? I was out of control, <laughs> but it didn't sound bad. Sometimes it was inaccurate, sometimes it was shaky, which is what you would expect would happen on stage. <sighs> but I was like, yes, I love it. <laughs> so it is what it is. But it's just, it feels good. It feels really good. Day 10. Today I was more in control. I think the water was just as cold, but I could be calmer. I did. I sang. I had more control over my singing, even though sometimes it was not perfect. But uh, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Okay, that was day 13. <laughs> I wish I uh, had recorded the previous singing in the shower that I've done because there's definitely a difference. There were a few moments that were a bit shaky, but I was really surprised by how I could actually perform um, and achieve more, um, just more control. Wow being under the cold water and by the way today was the first day that i turned the water all the way cold it was pretty cold it's crazy it's crazy stuff guys it's crazy stuff this was the introduction of a cold exposure for me so i started off very frightened very much inexperienced naturally and i had very little control over my voice 
when I was in the shower. And that really represents what most beginners experience when they start performing in front of other people and they feel like they don't have that control because being on stage is a completely different experience than when you're just in a lesson or when you practice at home. When I say it out loud, it sounds like it's obvious, but not many people take that into account and then they have the expectation of doing as well than they did at home on the stage. That's probably not gonna happen. Most people are gonna perform less good on the stage in the beginning. My goal with the process of stage, of overcoming stage fright is to get more and more of a say in what comes out of your mouth. So what you see I've done in this first period of experimenting is mainly what I teach in the course about mantras and changing the mindset. Um, I'm talking about my stage course called Single on Stage. And one of the things that you have to remind yourself in the beginning is that this is not a life-threatening situation and you want to correct the thoughts and feelings you have about the stage or in this case the cold shower from negative thoughts to positive ones. For example, I go into the cold water and my body is thinking, I hate this. Then what I do is I yell out loud, I love this. Of course, I don't mean it at first, but just doing this a bunch of times is going to convince me physically that I actually don't hate it. And it really does work. I keep saying that fake it till you make it is a real thing. There is research that shows that when you smile widely, even when you're sad, your brain will start releasing happy chemicals into your body as if you are actually happy. So you can fake happiness and it gets the snowball going. And that's what I had to do in the beginning. Now I want to move on to the winter experience. Already last month, I realized that my showers are getting significantly colder. I had to challenge myself all over again. And it was only then when I discovered a very important key in my dealing with cold exposure, and that's the deep breathing. I probably should have mentioned this before, but cold exposure is mainly taught nowadays by uh, the Dutchman Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman. I'm a big fan. He is a badass. And he he's really doing all kinds of research about what kind of things the body can endure with the training of cold exposure. And the main aspect that he's talking about is changing the mindset. He teaches what is called deep breathing. So just getting a ton of oxygen into the body and then exhaling and staying, he calls that retention, staying without breath for uh, a minute and a half. Hmm. Did not work so smoothly for me under the shower, but I don't even think that's the point because from the very first time that I tried the deep breathing, I realized that the retention stage after you exhale and you stop your breath is giving me this level of calmness and this level of serenity that I was looking for when I'm on stage to replace the panic. Yeah, all we want when we go on stage is to not be panicked and to have some control. And that was calm. So I knew there was something there. And once I started doing that, it changed the game completely. I started dealing with the cold a lot better. So you will see that in the videos. Winter challenge day one. I'm starting a new challenge because this is something else. I sang a bit, my voice cut off a few times. Let's see how that progresses. Day two. Doing the summer edition helped the mental aspect. I practiced that already. My body was still freaking out, <laughs> but a lot less than it would have had it been my first time, so.
So day 13 or so, it's not very consistent. You can tell that it's not consistent. It's more difficult to sing on one hand. On the other hand, it's easier to be there in the cold. The breathing is not improving. <laughs> Just continue again tomorrow. practice under the cold and try different techniques to help my big phrase my long phrase happen that went pretty well it, it's a i'm still searching for it but the, the way the body functions under the cold is not bad and now it's more about the vocal technique than anything else i'm still happy about that still when the actual cold shower challenge started i was avoiding it. It was very difficult for me to get traction and be consistent with my showers because it, because it's so cold, it felt again like what I thought it would feel like, like torture. Like, oh no, I'm gonna get attacked. It does feel, in the first seconds, it feels like an attack. So you get the fight or flight response, which is the whole point, right? But of course, I didn't want to do it. So I have to be honest about that. The motivation to doing this is tricky. You need to remember what the feeling is like after the shower and to understand what benefits you get from consistency. To be able to get yourself into the shower, at least in my case, it was hard in the beginning to do. And I did learn something that helped me with that. I'm gonna share that with you. And that is sort of a wisdom that can also help in general with motivation when it comes to practicing singing or when it comes to just doing work for to promote yourself as a business if you're a singer. All kinds of things that we need drive for and then we find ourselves sometimes in this battle, this inner battle of being really afraid of what's gonna happen or what's not gonna happen, being afraid of failure, being afraid of success, that clashes with our motivation to do anything. I know I'm not alone in this because I get students like that all the time and they don't practice, really disappointed with themselves and they know it's not gonna get them what they want. And they know they're wasting money on expensive voice lessons without getting all the benefits of it, but still, there is something blocking us and I have some thoughts about this and I've found some tricks to deal with that but first I want to show you the results um, that actually happened this morning my final <laughs> it's not my final product at all but I arrived somewhere and I'm happy with it I want to share that with you and I want to talk to you about how I got there and then we can wrap it up for today
Yes, yes. We're on our way to crack the code on stage fright. And the cold was on me and I just, I was just peaceful. And then I needed the mind switch from, I'm trying really hard to make this singing work to whatever comes out, I'm just gonna love it. And I'm just gonna enjoy every bit of it. And boy, did that work well. I'm so happy. I almost didn't shower today. I went into the shower almost to spite myself, like you deserve a punishment or something like that. And I ended up just having a time of my life. As you can see, I'm very satisfied. <laughs> and I, I'm not very often satisfied with my own singing. Yeah, artists are very harsh critics of themselves. I'm no different. And to be able to say, I did this well, it takes, it takes a lot. <laughs> so here are my secrets. You already have seen the, the process that I was in. I was working with the deep breathing. I was working with practicing the technique under the shower. And I was working on the mindset of tricking myself into thinking, thinking that I like this. All of that is all well and dandy. But still, there was a part of my mentality. And I talked about it in previous episodes, the, what I call the student mode, the trying mode, really making all the efforts, swimming uphill. That's what it feels like. It feels like, oh, I'm, I, I'm supposed to be able to do this, but it's not happening or it's not happening to my liking or it's taking so long. And that kind of mindset is super frustrating and it happens to everyone. So when I need to give advice in these situations, I say, okay, we need to put the trying mode, we need to put the student mode on hold, and we need to get a performance mindset. And that was my whole point of making Sing Well on Stage, my, my stage course, was to switch into the performance mindset. So that's what I did. The performance exercises I chose was to repeat to myself how much I love it love my voice, love the aria, love the experience. Just I'm really enjoying myself on the internal level. So I was getting myself to feel really good in inside my body while I was singing. And I had these vocal technique kind of tricks that I was using, but that was not the point. When I was in the state of mind, I was enabling myself to use the technique whenever I wanted, and sometimes I didn't. And that didn't bother me at all because I was not concentrating on that. It was serving me instead of being this kind of test that I should now be able to, to take. Of course, emotions and expression and the, nar the narrative of the song and the context of the song, those came naturally while I was in this healthy state of being. That's because I already did the zoom in work and the fixation work and the perfectionism work before, but I also knew, okay, this is now not helpful anymore. This is just getting in my way. This is frustrating me. This is killing me. I need a break that was my break and so my conclusion is ready for this cold exposure will give you a way to get to know your body and its responses and the unlimited opportunities to practice that in my first chance i'm going to add that to my course because i think this is going to change everything until now i would say go and do karaoke at first, go get some friends to sit in your living room and sing to them, do open mics. That's all good advice, but I mean, if you're super militant, you'll get that happening once a week. Cold shower you can have every day. I think that's brilliant. Use the cold showers or bath to do the work, do some stage fright exercises, do the deep breathing, seriously, do it, and then, change the mindset with performance exercises. So my conclusion is, ready for this? There is a way to use the cold showers to get over your stage fright. However, it's not gonna be an automatic 
process. You're not going to just do cold showers and then miraculously get rid of your stage fright when you're on stage. I already know that I knew that from the beginning because I got some feedback from people who have been using cold showers, but they still had stage fright. So there is something intentional that you need to do there. And that's what it is. You should use the cold showers to train your body to deal with the fight or flight. Do it if you can daily, at least five times a week. That's what Wim Hof teaches. If you have off periods, just to brush it off and go back on the horse. Don't even waste time worrying about that. Just move on with your life. Practice the stage fright exercises and the mantras and the deep breathing and all the things that can help you with stage fright. And I teach all of that on YouTube and in my course. While you're doing this kind of training, you will have your own insights. You will have your own understandings of how you behave, what kind of responses you have and how you can accept them. At the end of the day, you will reach a point when you have worked hard enough. And that's when you need to switch modes into professional modes and pretend that you're a pro, use a performance exercise and just go all out. When you do that, get some real life opportunities to sing in front of other people and then see how you can intentionally use what you learned under the shower and use that on the stage. It is a process, but I'm telling you with the cold showers, the process is going to be much faster and there is a lot more euphoric moments that you can get when you do that. I invite you to join me on this. I'm still doing this. I'm still figuring all kinds of stuff out. I'm still crafting this method and I'm hoping eventually this will be a method. How to use cold showers to get over stage fright. We already have some answers. So let's put them into research. As many of us as possible, just write to me, tell me, hey, I'm dealing with stage fright. I want to take this on. We will conquer this together. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please enjoy your singing, keep in touch, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.